Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. The Earth is currently experiencing a geomagnetic storm. We're getting the full impact and the uh, scientists thought we would just get a glancing blow. Geomagnetic storms affect our weather. They also create earthquakes. Recently, there was a magnitude 3.3 earthquake along the New Madrid Fault Zone. USGS revised it to a magnitude 3.0. Afterwards, in the same location, there was a magnitude 1.6. Originally, like I said, the scientists thought it would be a KP index of a 1, but it went up to all the way to 7. Currently, it's at about a 3. According to the Washington Post, the uh, level geomagnetic storm of 3 is considered strong. The storm was originally anticipated be, to be a level 1 status. We might be able to see auroras tonight. Geomagnetic storms can put displays as far as Boston, Chicago, Seattle, the Northern Plains, and parts of the Corn Belt. This 3.3 earthquake, which was revised to a 3.0, 12 people reported feeling it here on USGS. Here on EMSC, you can see it was a 3.3. On the felt reports, we got five responses from the county of Madrid. Uh, down here, there's one. One from there, and then one from up there. Not only do we have new Madrid shaking, but here is the latest for Yellowstone Super Volcano. I'll do a report on that in a little bit. Now, under my last video that I posted about the cats playing with the remote control snake, someone said there was bridge damage. Uh, this is really small, and I doubt that there is any type of damage, unless you're right there within the area of this earthquake. You might have some hairline cracks to foundations and walls. And zooming out, we'll take a look at... Yeah, right here, <laughs> okay... This is not far from the earthquake they had in 1811 and 1812, the magnitude 8.5. This area of the fault line, or fault zone, is what's called a, um, a locked, blocked fault zone, where the fault zone has taken a step, and that's why you got this curve in the river. And as you know, any earthquake has a 20% chance of being a foreshock for something much larger. Five earthquakes in this area along this bend in the last week. Um, a 1.6, a 3.0, a 2.0, a 1.3, and a 1.7. Look how it's just kind of going straight up north. The 1.3 was smack dab. Right in the middle of the river. Look at that. The 2.0 was in an area where they have a lot of past blowholes. That's where the ground is saturated with water. And it shoots up sand along with the water. Let me bring this out a little bit. And here's the location of the magnitude 1.6. That looks like a, yeah, an airport runway. Originally, when this earthquake occurred, USGS said it was a 2.9. That was at 1040 a.m. local time. And they said it was close to Howardville. Now they say it's close to Marston, Missouri. You know, it's giving it some thought about why people do not prepare for a large earthquake. And I think what the problem is, much of this younger generation have not had to go through a major disaster. An example, the 1989 magnitude 6.9 earthquake that struck San Francisco. Many of the people today, the younger generation, weren't around, weren't even born then. 63 people died in that earthquake. Uh, a lot of them when the Oakland Bay Bridge collapsed. We really haven't had too many major disasters where people have to rebuild for this younger generation to have gone through. 
and thus see the need to prepare for a large disaster. Hurricane Katrina, that was 2005. The older the generation, the more things you have seen and gone through. The younger generation doesn't know anything about rationing. They don't know about victory gardens. They have not personally experienced the horrors of war. And being unprepared, that's probably why they say if there's a major disaster here in the United States where power is taken down uh, for a year, we'll say a year, that 90% of the population would be dead. The lack of sanitation, the lack of clean water, no emergency services, not knowing first aid. Psychologists say that unless someone experienced some sort of trauma when they were very young, they probably don't have empathy for other people. If you go through some sort of trauma when you're young, be it violence or a fire, a flood or hurricane, whatever the disaster may be, to the younger generation, it is meaningless to them. The earthquake in San Francisco happened about 31 years ago, and I was talking to my neighbor about the need to prepare and use that as an example, and she told me she wasn't even born then. Yeah, it was about 31 years ago. To many of us, it's probably just like a blink in the eye in time. Still vivid in our minds, seeing the smoking carnage of the crushed cars between the layers of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. My son often says to me, Mom, you've been preparing my entire life for a disaster, for the world to come to an end, and it's never happened. It'll never happen. But if it wasn't for me preparing, having extra supplies of food, when he went through an economic hardship such as this last pandemic, he would not have had the food available to him, the boxes of food that I gave to him and to my grandchildren. My monthly Social Security is only about $700 a month. That's it. And yet, because I buy things when I see them on sale, I am able to put away extra food supplies, which in end ended up feeding him and my grandchildren when he was out of work for months. So I think it's up to the older generation to prepare to protect our, our family, our children, our grandchildren for what may happen, what may come one day. They don't know the old saying from the Boy Scouts about always be prepared. That's not taught anymore. My, my children do know how to plant crops. They know how to raise livestock. I taught them that. But I would say the majority of his generation and younger do not know even how to plant a seed, how to raise chickens or pigs, cattle. They have had it so easy. They've been protected. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.